right guys in this video we are going to discuss about concentrated winding and uh, sandwich winding concentrated winding and sandwich winding generally concentrated winding nothing but what you know already if we have a core like this on this core we need to wind on the both the limbs right so for example this is one winding which is maybe a lv winding or hv winding and this is another winding if this is a lv this is a hv this type of winding is called concentrated winding generally for our understanding we will draw like this but here the disadvantage is that the leakage flux is very very high comparatively that's why in generally the concentrated windings we are not using okay sir to reduce the leakage flux we go for sandwich winding right so generally the sandwich winding how it will be the sandwich winding this is a transformer core like this we have a three limbs on this generally we need to place the winding here this is a lv winding this is a hv winding and this is the lv winding and this is the hv winding and again this is the lv winding lv winding hv winding lv winding hv winding lv winding in between each winding we need to place the what we called uh, insulation here insulation will be there sir in between the two windings we need to place the insulation insulation will be there generally like a layer by layer such type of winding is called called sandwich winding in sandwich winding the leakage flux is very less very less means how sir how much less compared to this compared to this here the leakage flux is 75 percent reduces compared to this 75 percent of leakage flux reduced generally this is a sandwich winding yeah of course sir for uh, low voltage high current applications we can use this but for high voltage applications generally we need to go for concentrated winding which is core type but in core type we have a concentrated winding which gives you a maximum leakage flux that's why we are not using this concentrated winding then which type of winding we will prefer which type of winding is better for high voltage applications in generally we are using that interleaved concentrated winding interleaved concentrated winding is preferred for high voltage application sir how it will be the interleaved concentrated winding how how it will be have a look here this is a core type transformer we need to go for interleaved concentrated winding right so interleaved concentrated winding nothing but for example here lv started lv started but ends at this end this is 50 percent of lv winding and this is another 50 percent of lv winding another 50 percent of lv winding and hv winding will be started here and uh, this is hv1 and this is hv2 nothing but 50 percent of hv winding will be on one limb and remaining 50 percent of hv winding will be on another limb 50 percent of lv winding on on limb and remaining 50% of LV winding on another limb. This is in generally called interleaved concentrated winding. In this interleaved concentrated winding, leakage flux reduced by, compared to this, compared to this, leakage flux reduced by 50%. Leakage flux reduced by 50%. Here the leakage flux reduced by 75%. Here, maximum leakage flux compared to all this and here generally this is interleaved concentrated winding in generally they will they will give you like a imagination for you people which is interleaved concentrated winding this is but practically the winding is not like this 
how it will be the practically the concentrated winding which is interleaved concentrated winding will be like this and sandwiched winding will be like this how it will be first here core will be there core will be there of course on that core first we need to take the insulation first we need to place the insulation on that core for example i will show you here if this is my transformer core on this core first we need to take the insulation on the core as usually on the second side also this is completely insulation i placed the insulation after that we need to place the winding on this this is called lv winding actually this is called lv winding see this is called lv winding the first one this is called lv winding the first one this is called lv winding combinedly this is called lv winding this is called lv winding on both sides sir on both sides here also we need to place the winding this is lv winding on this lv winding again we need to place the insulation on this lv winding again we need to place the insulation insulation will be there after the insulation the complete after the insulation again we need to take the hv winding again we need to take the hv winding this is hv winding see this is hv winding this is hv winding these are the high voltage windings these are the high voltage windings first insulation then after lv winding again insulation again hv winding how it will be how it will be on the core type transformer let's see let's see for example for example first we need to place the insulation on this like this completely we need to place the insulation after the insulation we need to place the winding which is called lv winding see for example this is called my lv winding this is called my lv winding after the after the winding again we need to place the insulation let's see again i placed the insulation after the insulation again we need to place the winding again we need to place the winding such a winding this last winding is called hv winding this winding is called hv winding see this is called hv winding okay are you getting my point this is insulation this is also insulation these are the insulations i placed here and uh, this is the yellow lines are called lv windings and this the pink lines are called hv windings the same procedure will be here also the same procedure will be here also like this like this we need to take the windings here like this we need to take the windings here first insulation actually then after lv winding and over the lv winding we have again insulation after the insulation we need to place the hv winding this is actually procedure sir but uh, what i am showing here this is just for imagination just for easy understanding 50% of hv 50% of lv nothing but see here 50% of lv 50% of hv 50% of lv 50% of hv i placed here like that this is what about concentrated which is interleaved concentrated winding and what about sandwich winding what about sandwich winding this is a sandwich winding see this is a middle limb these two are the side limbs these two are the side limbs here see first of all always we need to prefer lv winding to the ends because lv windings gives you less leakage flux of course you may put here hv also but hv gives you more leakage flux guys see here here lv winding lv winding 
and HV winding, LV winding, HV winding like a layer by layer. In between these two, every layer, in between these two, every layer, we need to place the insulation. Here, insulation will be there like this. Here, insulation will be there like this. We need to take the insulation here. We need to take the insulation here. This is a sandwich winding. If top and bottom layers are same, that is called symmetrical sandwich winding. If top and bottom layers are same. If the top layer is LV, then after HV, then after LV, bottom layer is HV. Top layer is LV, but the bottom layer is SV. Such type of windings are called asymmetrical sandwich winding. Asymmetrical sandwich winding. Actually, we have a, some theory here also. In symmetrical sandwich winding, axially stable. Axially stable, but uh, radially, but uh, radially, it may be unstable. Radially, it may be unstable. But asymmetrical sandwich winding, radially stable, but axially unstable. Axially unstable. This is called, uh, this is called axial forces. These are called radial forces. The forces uh, experienced on the windings are core. In this direction, those are called radial forces. The forces uh, experienced on winding in this way, those are called axial forces. In symmetrical winding, the axial forces are balanced, but radial forces are not balanced. In asymmetrical winding, radial forces are balanced, which is stable, balanced, but uh, axial forces are unbalanced, which is unstable, unbalanced forces will be there. So by axial shifting, we can make axial balance, by radial shifting, we can make radial balance, whatever it may be, finally, finally, the N1, I1 should be equals to N2, I2. The N1, I1 should be equals to N2, I2. Then, axially and radially, it is stable. Yes, are you clear, sir? So, this is simply what about concentrated and sandwich windings. We have a few.